What if I told you that your coding skills could make you more money through a one-person business than your full-time job as a software engineer? I'm a software engineer and I recently started a one-person business. In the first month, I made $11,000 all while working only four hours a day. There is a specific framework that transformed me from a regular programmer to running a profitable tech business. Almost every programmer can start a successful business by following those three steps. Today, I will show you the fastest way to start a one-person business as a developer. While other devs are fighting for jobs, you're gonna learn how to build your own money printing machine. There are two types of devs in the market today. They are the grinders who work super hard at their job, or if they don't have a job, they work very hard on getting one. They apply to hundreds of positions in the hope of getting those big tech salaries. And then there is the other type, those who grind on using their coding skills to build assets that make them money online. Ideally, that can even make them money while they sleep. Actually, I don't have a problem with any of those paths. I think they're both legit, like the traditional path of getting a job or the more entrepreneurial path. As long as you can provide for a family and you do something good that is useful to society, it's all good to me. The only problem is that in today's market, relying on only one source of income, so relying only on your job, is very risky. It's better if you have more than one source of income. And Alhamdulillah, for us as programmers, we actually have a unique advantage. Because we can build entire products from scratch, we can automate literally anything. We can use AI in a much more advanced way. We can build products that scale, and on top of this, we can do all of that from our bedroom. But the problem is that most programmers have no idea how to turn those skills into a profitable business. You don't know how to monetize your skills. Before I learned how to code, I actually tried a bunch of different side hustles starting from a teenager, right? I was first selling digital art for people, then I launched my own online store to sell custom made t-shirts. Then I tried job shipping, like in an ethical way. Then I did like tutoring, I started tutoring business and a variety of different things. This was all before I learned how to code. So when I got the coding skills, it allowed me to find a more efficient path towards making money. There are two main ways to make money with coding that gives you the highest returns. One is the SaaS. You can build a SaaS, that's the dream path, or you can provide a service, you can start an agency like ideally an AI agency. That's the smart path. That's the one that I picked. I started Codebender AI. It's an AI development agency that helps companies implement AI solutions. We build automations and AI agents for companies. The framework that I'm about to share with you has three stages, but there is a hidden fourth stage that completely blew my mind. Like in my opinion, this is how you can get to a million dollars per year or more. So here's the framework to get you to start your business as fast as possible. Stage number one, you need to define the niche. The best niche has a combination of these elements. Number one, the people inside of the niche are rich. So they have money to spend, they can pay you, right? You don't want to target a niche that is broke because no one can pay for your services. So that's number one. They need to be rich or they need to have money to spend. Number two, it should be easy for you to show return on investment for them. So you want a niche where those people, those potential clients, they have money to spend. And once they spend money, they spend like $5,000 on you. You can easily show them that you can make $20,000 for them. So things like automations, typically AI agents, it's easy to show those types of things. The next point is that they're easy to find. You want targets, like you want a niche that you can easily identify and find online so that you can get clients, right? Like if they're an amazing niche, but there is no way to get your first client, like there is no point in going after them. An example of a good niche that is easy to find is doctors. You can literally go on Google Maps, you write doctor, you're gonna find all doctors nearby in your city, you're gonna get their emails, their phone numbers, and everything that you need to reach out to them. That's an example of a niche that is easy to target. The next important thing is that they're in pain. So there's something that is missing in their life, there's something that is missing in their business where you can bring some value. And the last part is that it fits your interest. So ideally you're interested in whatever this niche is doing, whatever the businesses in, in that niche are doing so that you can do a better job in uh, when you work for them. Versus if it's something that is completely boring for you, it's gonna be harder. There is also a bonus step is if you have some prior experience in a certain field, right? Like based on your past experience, based on the network you have, like something that gives you an extra advantage, you should also try to leverage that. So with the example of doctors is if you have a lot of doctors in your family, you should try to leverage this, right? Like if you want to go into that field, because that gives you the first layer of network that is already done for you. So the first clients could literally be either members of your family, or they can introduce you to other doctors, other people with whom you might work and provide like some, some development service. Some examples of good niches are, we already mentioned doctors, but it's lawyers, realtors, funded tech startups. So tech startups that raise millions of dollars, they have money and they fit into all those categories that we mentioned. Stage number two, you have to market yourself. This is where most developers fail. They build in silence so no one knows about them no one knows about their service and what they do they might be super skilled but if no one knows it they're not gonna hire you they're not gonna pay you so the first thing that you should do is use your personal network go through the list of all the contacts that you have on linkedin who can you reach out to 
So there's two categories, right? Like one of them is going to be like your target audience. So people with whom you can work, people who can hire you. The next one is going to be people who can introduce you to other people. So with the example of doctors that we mentioned, right? If you have dogs in your network, ask them directly uh, if they would be interested in your service. Like if you want to build an AI voice agent for them, for example, like a phone, phone receptionist, ask them if they would be interested. But then there might be another category in your network who they're not going to hire you directly, but they know other people who might hire you. So you want to reach out to them first. This is the first layer is the first step that you do is easy to literally send a DM to everyone in your network that is relevant. The next way to market yourself is by making your skills public. You want to show your skill set. The best way to do this is to build projects. But we're not going to just build any projects, right? Like a lot of people talk about building projects for job search, etc. We're going to do it very, very different. The whole goal of our strategy is to leverage on an existing trending AI technology, something that is trending big time right now. So for example, like OpenAI, they released the real-time API not too long ago. The real-time API is this API that uh, allows for voice interaction, right? So you can talk to it and the API will reply with uh, voice. This is something completely new that came out and there was a lot of noise about it. Imagine if you're one of the first people who build a project on it and then you post it on LinkedIn, maybe you make a quick YouTube video, like literally zero effort you make just a loom, like a loom video. Whereas your face, you, you share your screen and you just walk through the project that you built. This is going to give you a lot of attention because this new technology that has just come out, there are no experts on it. But there's a lot of people who are interested in it. So they're going to share your stuff. They're going to want to talk to you. They'll want to ask you questions. And that's how you can position yourself. That's how you can stand out compared to the crowd. That's honestly the two strategies I use to get to 10K a month. One is the network. And the other one is if you don't have the network, is literally just find a trending technology, look into the AI news and make a project and post about it. Stage number three is the growth stage. So once you have made your work public online or once you reached out to people and you have connections, you're, you're starting to have discussions, you need to schedule calls. Right, you need to schedule calls with qualified leads. Inside of those calls, it can be like 15 minutes, it can be 30 minutes maximum. Your goal is to figure out what their needs are, what they're trying to achieve, what their business looks like, what are all the different operations happening there, so that you have a good view of their business and what their need is and how important it is for them. Then at the end of that call, you have to schedule another call for a few days later. That call will be about the proposal that you're going to make for them and you'll try to sign them as a client for you. In between those two calls, you'll have a few days. In those days, you need to prepare a proposal. So if they want you to build a chatbot, you need to prepare like uh, how the chatbot is going to look like, how much time is going to be involved, what is the feature set, how you're going to build it so that you can propose them a price and a concrete proposal and a contract that they can sign inside of the next call. That's the strategy. Ideally, you want to be smart about it as well. That's why like in the first round, like the discovery call, when you ask them questions, you also want to think long term. Like if today they ask you to build a chatbot, try to think about their business and see, okay, is this just like a short one time project or there's more opportunities? Because maybe the chatbot is step number one. Maybe later they're going to need another automation. Maybe they're going to need an AI voice agent. Maybe they're going to need a bunch of different things. So then you can build like a long term relationship and you can start proposing them more and more things. But the first step is to validate that first project they ask you. We actually use this framework inside of my accelerator. Every month we have a challenge to build an AI app within a certain team. With Andrew, we build a social media AI voice agent that generates LinkedIn posts. A client recently paid us $1,200 dollars to access that tool. Then with Albert, we build an AI voice agent and a client paid him $2,000 to spin up an agent like that for him. And it took him only one week. If you're interested in this and you want to learn how to build projects like that and land clients, feel free to book a call. There's a link in the description. We're going to talk and we'll see if you're right fit for the Codebender Accelerator. I went through the three stages of the framework, but remember, I told you that there is a hidden fourth step, the one that changes everything, the one that will allow you to scale to a million dollars per year and way past that. Once you start getting clients, you will notice that the work you do is pretty much repetitive. Because if you follow the framework correctly, if you identify the niche and you only take clients within that niche, it's going to be pretty much the same requests every single time. For example, if you work with lawyers and they ask you for some AI automation to speed up how they process documents, every law firm will pretty much need the same thing, right? You just need to adapt a little bit from law firm to law firm, but it's about the same. So over time, as you work on those projects, you're going to start building some internal automations. You're going to start building tools to help you deliver those projects faster. Clients are not going to know this. So when you land a new client, it will just be a matter of like clicking a button, configuring something small, and then you're going to spin up a full new automation for them. Clients are not going to know this. They don't need to know. But that's how this is what is going to be happening internally in your business. Once you have that, you essentially build a SaaS internally and then you can make it public. 
you will switch from agency mode to SaaS mode. This is way more scalable. You can get a lot more clients and the exits for SaaS are a lot more interesting. If you sell your SaaS business, you can make millions and millions of dollars. Agencies are much harder to sell. But the advantage of going this route, so the route of first building an agency and then building a SaaS versus only building a SaaS, is that with this approach, you're gonna take zero risks because clients will essentially pay you to build those projects and then for you to build those automations internally. Then you're gonna get the validation from the market because clients are gonna give you instant feedback on the work that you're doing. So you you will know that it's valuable. You're gonna get very good testimonials for when you launch the SaaS and you're gonna get referrals from those clients that you have built good relationships with. This is a much better spot to be in when you start your SaaS compared to starting from zero and just spending months of time building something when you have no clients and no traction. Instead of starting here, you're gonna start here with a huge strategic advantage of having all those clients and those testimonials and that initial capital. And this is my framework for the fastest way to build a one-person business as a developer. Remember, Codebenders, when you do the work others want, you will get the results they can't. If you want me to help you, like I said, feel free to book a call. There's a link in the description and we're just going to talk and see if you're right fit for the Codebender Accelerator program. And now if you want to learn the skills to help you build projects like this, check out this video right here. Thank you for watching. Assalamu alaikum.